Hi, I'm Jared Littner, Bassmaster Elite Series Pro, and today we're out here on the West Coast uh, fishing a couple little lakes. And, um, you know, we're getting to the time of year where it's winter and, and you know, the water temp's starting to fall. The lakes are in the drawdown, but that doesn't mean that the big fish won't bite. Um, one of the major factors that I look for this time of year is big fish coming up really shallow in the creek channels, um, rocks, wood. Anything that will give them a real good ambush point um, seems to be real productive. Um, the, main, the main factor in that is that a lot of the vegetation that's grown throughout the summer months is dying. And what I like to do is just get on a, you know, a big heavy flipping jig, um, heavy line, 25 pound test, real, real good five power rod, and you know, just see if those big fish are up sunning and, and feeding up for the long winter months that are ahead. Um, usually, usually your bites, if you do get on some big fish in these creeks in the dirtier water, usually your bites are going to come anywhere from two to five foot. And the thing about it is, is fishing a jig like this, you're not going to catch a whole ton of fish. You're not going to go out and catch 30, 40 fish. You might catch four or five throughout the course of a day, but they're going to be the ones that will put you over the edge in the tournament. Um, several other things you can do in the fall to catch numbers of fish, but this is one of my favorite techniques for catching big, big fish. So we'll see if we can work down this bank and catch one of those big ones. We got the normal Tackle Warehouse vlog guy back here trying to teach him how to fish because he's usually in the warehouse doing nothing. So, um, you know, another, the way I like to work my jigs this time of year too is the fish are get really aggressive. They kind of get out of their summer mode where they're kind of lethargic and stuff, and they'll start really ambushing bait, crawfish. So I like to pop my jig, you know, a good distance, really make them react to the bait instead of just, you know, slowly sneaking up on it. I mean, they'll, they'll jump all over it. That was a little bite there. See, this is a perfect spot right here. We got all this vegetation that used to be here in the summertime. And, uh, you know, it's still there. They'll still use it. But what's mainly going to hold these fish is these rocks and stumps that come out off this bank. We got a couple little bends right here in this river channel. And it's really, really a uh, good productive spot um, in the fall. Come on, fish. You know, the, the colors this time of year for the crawfish, too, it, it, a lot of it depends on the, the water clarity. Um, we're fishing here, and it's really stained, and, and it's getting back fed by the main river right here. And uh, so generally, you know, I'll start off with like a black and blue. Um, sometimes even a black chartreuse, any kind of, you know, semi-clear to clear water, green pumpkin, green pumpkin and orange, it's really hard to beat those two combinations, you know, I mean, sometimes you can experiment with watermelons and stuff, they're not biting the green pumpkin that well, um, and I've even caught them in semi-clear water on shad colored jigs, you know, just like a white with a silver single tail Yamamoto grub or, or something like that that imitates a, a dying bait fish. Um, sometimes that, you know, that will trigger them, but it's, it's mainly important to just stick to colors you're confident in, let the water dictate your color choices, and just fish it effectively. Give it enough, enough of a shot to know if they're going to bite or not, because sometimes, you know, you're not going to get more than, like I said, four or five bites. Uh, so we'll just keep on going, see what we can do. You know, getting back to the rod, rod and reel that I was talking about earlier, um, like I said, you know, I, I use a five power long rod just for getting, having more power when you're fishing this shallow. Um, this is a 765 POW, um, has a lot of, lot of backbone and a real sensitive tip 
you know, so you can feel those real subtle pressure bites. And I'm using a Revo Premier uh, with 25 pound fluorocarbon. And the reason I'm doing this is because there's really not a whole lot of, you know, abrasive stuff coming off the bank, like logs or stuff like that. It's mainly just rocks. And when you, when I'm fishing like that, with fluorocarbon, it's a lot, a lot more sensitive, a lot less stretch, but I still don't want to throw braid because I'm, there's not as much stuff to get them out of. Um, and the, the monofilament line, I've done that in the past and have had pretty good success with it, but overall I, I feel like I just get more bites with fluorocarbon when I'm doing this kind of fishing. Um, if there was a ton more laydowns or, you know, stumps, things like that, I'd be throwing probably 60, 60 to 80 pound braid just because of the water clarity. But, uh, you know, uh, I'm throwing a, uh, a Jay Ellis Berkeley power bait jig with a little chigger car on the back. And, you know, just kind of easing on down the bank. And uh, if you use these suggestions, I think you'll catch more fish this fall.